Welcome back to How To Craft Fair. My name is John and I am super sick today. It is indeed stage four man cold. Okay, but we're gonna we're gonna push through and uh, get through this the best that we can. So yeah. Uh this is episode number 25 in the Craft Fair Booth Review series. A big monumental episode that we've been looking forward to. So episode 25. And the Craft Fair Booth Review Series is where I break down a real Craft Fair booth submitted by one of my subscribers and members of the channel, and I break it down into 10 different segments. Along the way, I'll point out things that the vendor is doing well and should continue to do, and then also identify some areas where there is room for improvement. During the review, keep your Craft Fair booth in mind so that you can apply these tips in order to take your booth to the next level. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, and so for today's booth review, we're going to be taking a look at Megan's booth. And Megan's business name is Charming Crafts. And pretty much most of what the booth is going to consist of is what I would describe as witchy oddities. All right, so you're going to see some some strange things and then also some uh, typical crafts, you know, like nexus, necklaces, jewelry, that kind of thing. But there's a certain flair to it that definitely um, kind of pushes into the Halloween aspect. So we'll be able to check that out. And Megan is from the state of Kentucky. Brand new state on the Booth Review series. Very cool. And the type of layout that we're going to be looking at during the review is the Z layout. And this has become a lot more popular and common. And it's basically where you have three tables and it's positioned in the shape of a Z if you were looking at it from overhead. So yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is actually gonna be two short videos. So there's kind of like a walkthrough and that's gonna give us a really nice overlook of the booth as a whole, okay? So we'll take a look at the first video here and we'll play it. All right. Okay, so that is the first leg of the Z pattern. You can kind of see it taking shape now. And here is the middle table. All right. And I believe that these are, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think these are three six foot tables. And then finally over here is the last table right here. Okay, so mostly candles here on this table. That might be a four foot table. So I think it might be six, six, four. Um, could be four, six, four as well. But um, yeah, either way that gives you an idea of what the Z pattern looks like. So let's go ahead and check out the other video. And this is gonna show us a little bit of a different angle. So this is actually gonna show the side of the canopy. And she has a small table here, probably about the size of like your standard card table size. And then a couple of pegboards on the wall here. Okay, so lots and lots of jewelry on the pegboards. Here's a frame that's being used. And now as we pull back, we can start to get a look at pretty much the setup as a whole. Okay, so we keep coming. Now there's the Z layout again. Great big banner in the back, looks great. And then one thing I wanna note right at the end here is she did have a double booth. So it was basically a 20 foot by 10 foot spot. And Megan has two businesses, okay? So one of them is Charming Crafts and that's like all her crafts stuff, okay? And her other business is she's a photographer, okay? So she also has a business where um, she does all different, all different types of photography. And she split her setup up into basically two different sections, okay, to try to market both the businesses. So we'll talk about that dynamic a little bit as we go on. And it's it's just really interesting because I think this is the first time that we've encountered this in the booth review series where, you know, there's one booth and two businesses. It's not something that's, you know, forbidden or frowned upon by any means. It's a challenge, you know, it's a challenge for the vendor to to try to pull it off and make it cohesive. 
but it's something that I'm looking forward to talking about because, again, it is something that definitely does exist out there, and there are some tricks on how to pull it off a little bit better. So let's go ahead and dive into our first segment. Okay, now here is the overall look at the booths, and the first thing that we're going to talk about is displays. So for the photography booth, you guys, we're going to go ahead and basically just occasionally comment on it. Our main focus here is going to be on the Charming Crafts booth, and as there's relevant information that crosses back and forth that's when we can kind of comment over here okay because this booth with the photography she has a backdrop set up and she had like a really big ring light that people could stand in front of and basically have their picture taken at the event okay so it was kind of cool because megan had some props over here like some scary masks and stuff like that um no idea when you the viewer are watching this video but this is airing right before halloween and this event was in the fall as well. So for displays, let's take a closer look in here. We're going to kind of break this down with this Z layout. That's what we're going to be focusing on the most here. And the first thing that you're going to notice is this big old coffin display. Really, really cool. Um, it's doing a great job of just featuring all the pins. There's plenty of room here, so it goes up pretty high. This is also the most vertical display of all the displays that you have. So it's it's definitely like an eye catcher. It's, it's very nice. Now it's all black and there might be like an opportunity there for maybe to color the outside of this purple somehow. So I don't know if you could very carefully paint just the edge, like that purple, your, your signature purple that you got going on. That might be kind of cool just to kind of break up like the all black going on, but something to think about. Down here, we have a couple of smaller displays for much smaller pieces. Looks like probably some bracelets. And then here are some necklaces, so they don't really take up a whole lot of room. And for displays, that might be it for this table. Now, there is kind of like a cool little you know, should we call it like a cauldron <laughs> going on over here? And I believe that you have stickers in here. And then finally for the koozies, you have a two level like rack, I guess you could call it, that's painted all black. Okay. And uh, labeled well, you know, so we got the the name of the items on the display too. So that's that's also nice to see. And let's keep going. We'll turn the corner on the Z here. And this is the secondary, the middle table, I guess you'd say. And this one is set up a lot differently. So here we have a couple of wooden crates on the far end and then on the closer end of the table here. And then you have um, a piece of wood that basically bridges the gap between the two. Really, really nice design here. I like this a lot because... First of all, it gives you some space underneath, so it kind of creates a bit of an opening here. And then now you can go way up and get that verticality in your display. So really, really good thinking. I like the way that you did this by putting the wood crates apart and then having this piece of wood bridge the gap between the two. So very, very nice there. And in between the displays, you guys, you're going to see a lot of decorative pieces, okay? So we see the candles, we see the mushrooms. Uh, there's going to be some elements that are mixed in here to kind of add to the atmosphere and the theme of the booth. All right, so let's continue on here. Last display that I can catch here is the chest and very very nice i i really really like this piece because again it just it really really fits into that theme very well kind of like the mystere the mystique right and i think the chest does a really good job of that maybe some underutilization on it though maybe would like to see some kind of a sign in here that lets us know what's going on in here okay so uh, you could probably put a little sign right here and uh, the name of the items, how much they cost, uh, just a little bit of information on what's going on kind of inside of here, okay? So that could be one possible improvement to this particular display. 
let's go ahead and move to the final leg of the Z pattern. And for that part, I'm going to have to refer to the video here. So we'll just kind of move it as we need it, need to, okay? So again, we have two wooden crates. So there's one there, one there, and there's no bridging this time, all right? So there's nothing in between the two. And instead, you've just placed items directly on top of the crates, which is fine. I think I actually, to be honest with you, out of all three of your tables, this is probably my favorite of the three. As just as far as like the visual setup and display. I think it's the cleanest. I think it's the least busy, but it's still offering a lot. And I am a big fan of symmetrical displays. So I like that you have, you know, the wood crate on the left side, then you got the wood crate on the right side, and then you have this nice circular piece uh, branching out in between it. Okay. It just it just feels really balanced. So I like this one a lot. I think this is, uh, like I said, my favorite table. Has a little bit of everything. Um, some signage, some displays, a lot of items. You've got your uh, business cards down there at the bottom. So you're doing a lot of things here. It looks, it looks really well presented. Okay, and then finally, the last piece of display that we can talk about is in this video here on this side. Okay, so we can cover this portion of the canopy. And you're utilizing your canopy bracing up here at the top to do a lot of things, actually. You have your displays hanging from it, and you also have some lighting that's attached to that as well, not to mention just the side of the canopy itself, okay? So there's a lot going on there, but that's not that that's a bad thing at all, okay? It's actually, it's, it's great. It's great utilization of it, so it's good to see that. So this particular display here is kind of neat. It's basically just a picture frame that doesn't have a picture, okay? So it's just the frame. And then you've taken, you've probably stapled it or glued it onto the back side of the frame. And I can't tell if that's like yarn or, you know, really thin rope or what what's going on there. But anyway, we can see that it's pretty much acting as like a clothesline. And you've got some items hanging from each of those as well. So... Really cool, really creative, nicely done, and very tasteful. And finally, we come back over here. We talked about the pegboards earlier. They are definitely loaded up, okay? So um, on a lot of these pegs, you see pretty heavy, heavy duplicates. And just be careful with how much uh, you're putting out there. Some items that are small, okay? So these earrings, they look, they look like they might be studs, right? So they're probably just really small pieces. Whereas these, are there, there's more to them. They're bigger, okay? So the more that you put on each peg, it gets a little bit sloppy. And these, they maintain their order really well, okay? So just try to be a good judge of that and maintain the order in all these, okay? Overall, I'd say it's pretty solid. There's just a little bit of... Um, you know, I don't want to say sloppiness, but a little bit of, of cluster up here. Okay. And then we kind of keep going over here and pretty much the same deal, you know, so a mix of smaller pieces and you have mid-sized pieces, but yeah, there's certainly a lot to pick from. You have a whole ton of variety at your booth. So that is good to see. Okay. So it's, if somebody's walking in your booth and they don't find something that they like or interested in, that's probably pretty amazing <laughs> because there's a little bit of something for everybody. And even though it's kind of all wrapped around like the Halloween like type of theme, there's certain things here that are definitely appeal to people year round. Like for instance, skulls, like skulls do well year round regardless, you know? So You've given yourself opportunities to really lean into the theme, but then you also have a couple of safety nets there that should be okay, really, no matter what time of year. So that is good to see. And then finally, we have this table right here. Let me see if I have a better picture of it. Um, good to see the mirror and very, very cool mirror, by the way. Guys, this is something that I've talked about before where... If you have a mirror that you're going to utilize at your booth, try to get a mirror that's like tied into your theme if possible. If you go on the internet and look up like 
uh, the different types of mirrors that are out there, you'd be pretty surprised. There's a mirror like in every shape, every color, like there's a mirror for everything. So try to get one that really reflects your theme because that's like something you can do at your booth that really helps to hammer home that strength of theme. And it's just going to help your overall booth experience for the shopper. All right, so here's a different angle at that table that we we're just looking at with the mirror on it right there, right? And looking at it from this angle, the table actually does stick out quite far uh, for how much items and stock is on the table. You could probably get away with having a slightly smaller or maybe even just like a rectangle table, like this four footer, right? If you had another four footer kind of like lined up this way, maybe it wouldn't come in as far because you want this opening to be as big as possible, okay? But yeah, as far as the displays portion of the review goes, I think we covered pretty much all of it. I like the displays. I like that you are conscious of your theme when we're talking about the displays. Like for instance, you have the coffin one here. We talked about the mirror that had like the skull on it. Those are things that you can do to really create an experience for your shoppers. All right, so now let's talk about pricing. So we're going to go back in here, and a lot of the pricing is covered either on the displays themselves. Okay, so here's an example. We have an example over here, all right, so it's kind of tied into the display. And then also, all throughout the booth, we're going to see these incredible coffin signs and... This is absolutely tremendous. Probably the best pricing signs we've seen yet in the booth review series because you talk about making signage and getting signage that reflects the theme of your booth. I mean, this is it. You know, this is an absolute home run. So great job with your signage. I'm going to go into a different picture because this one is slightly blurry. So we'll uh, go into this one here and we got a nice clear look at this one. So up at the top, we start with $25 rainbow rune stones. All right. And then we have painted rune stones that are $30. Okay. And the trinket box is 20 magnets. A set of five is $10. Keychains are $10 and a ghost jar is $12. Okay, so this is essentially what we call grouped pricing, where items are bunched up together. Okay, so items are going to be grouped together, and then there's going to be one sign that covers different types of products. Okay, I see that you occasionally have things marked individually as well so for instance up here you could see like the rainbow kitty has an individual tag on it down here i think these are big bookmarks these have indi individual tags you can see them right there and right here so it's it's good reinforcement you know it's it's pretty good clarity i would say that there is some trouble though with like the amount of items you have on each sign. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. You have six different items marked and priced on this one sign. Okay. So you kind of have to like see something, right? And then you got to like look for, you know, try to find it in here. And it's, and it's, it's bordering on like a bit much, you know? So if anything, I would try to now we're going to talk about like the amount of items that you have out there because like the variety is like the variety is probably the most that we've seen in the booth review, booth review series. There are a tremendous amount of different items at the booth, okay? So no matter what, that's going to make pricing difficult if you're doing grouped pricing. This is where I would probably steer you a little bit towards considering individual pricing because you're not going to have to worry about this issue anymore where it's like, okay, I'm going to literally have 30 different types of items at my booth. And how do I have, you know, grouped pricing for 30 different types of items? So individual pricing, having a tag on every single item that gets, that gets rid of that worry. You know, you don't have to worry about that, but 
then you kind of lose like some of your character because you probably won't have a need for this many of these coffin signs. And I think they're really, really cool, you know, so it's, it's tough. It's, it's really tough. If you want to stick with the grouped pricing, I would just try to, what I would do is put some gaps in your, in your display, like in your booth as a whole. Okay. So let me go back to this panned out shot right here. It's it's kind of blurry. It's not like the it's not the sharpest image, but take a look at how all these things are close together. Okay, so we have this sign, this display, this display, this display, this sign, this display, and then when we go to this middle table here, it's even it's almost even tighter than this one. Okay, so we can come back to that image, and oops, wrong one. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. When we come back to this table, now it's like, not only are we like all side by side the entire way down, but now we have like the depth of, you know, there's, it's completely loaded in the back and it's completely loaded in the front too. So it's just absolutely jam packed crammed. So you're going to have to inject some breathing space in between some of this stuff in order for you to remain with the grouped pricing and for it to be clear to people okay so like here you have like we talked about there's there's six different things that are covered on this sign right and then we kind of come over here and there's oh you know what this sign is actually covering this what i would do megan is actually just put take this sign and put it like right next to this chest or like reconfigure your stuff so that this is either in the chest like i don't know if you have a smaller version of this sign available that can like fit in here or if it can stand right next to it either the sign comes down or the chest goes up like one of the two you know so it's going to take some rearranging but see like right off the bat that wasn't clear to me it might just be because of the angle you know like if you were standing right in front of it okay it'd probably be a little bit more clear you know but from this angle that you know wasn't really clear to me but um, yeah, like I said before, I think some separation would be good. I think some separation is going to be really, really good for the booth just to provide a little bit more breathing space. And, um, there's different ways that you can do that. Okay. So you can either expand out the size of your booth. Okay. So we talked about that side table on the right side of the booth, maybe that could get expanded out into like a four foot or a six foot table so that, okay, now you can take some of these things and bring them onto that side table and buy yourself some breathing room in your Z, your Z pattern, your Z layout. Okay. So we'll talk about a few different things along the way during this review, but those are just some ideas to kind of get started. All right. So let's talk about signage. So the signage is First of all, very cool at the booth. I like that you have the themed signs. They look absolutely great. Uh, good size too. They're not like super huge and they're not small either. The lettering that you have on the signs, I like that it's white on black. I mean, you can't get better contrast than that. It stands out really, really well. The letters are all big enough that it's very legible and easy to read. So high marks on all of that stuff. So very, very good. Along the way, you'll kind of notice a few handwritten signs every now and then. So here's one right here that says $3 each or two for five. Okay. So you'll catch some of these signs. And again, it's pretty much like a, a black on white or, or close to it. This might be like gold or something like that, but pretty close, good contrast, still very legible. So that's all great. And we'll come over here. And here is a small tag that matches the tag that we just talked about, the two for five that was on the other side. And then over here, we have a couple more. All right, so you've done a good job of staying consistent with your signage all the way through. And that's good. That's really important at a booth because when shoppers are like starting out and especially when it's kind of a big booth like this and there's a lot to look at, it's nice for them to be able to look at a sign and see it once and basically start to look for that same type of signage. Okay, so when your signage is different, like every single time, you know, a different shape, different color every time, it's 
it's hard on the shopper. You know, you want to make it as easy as possible for them and, and as obvious as possible for them what everything costs, the name of everything, if you have any kind of deals, all that stuff. So you've done a really great job here of keeping everything super consistent. All right, let's dive into marketing. So this is where we can talk about the photography element of the booth as well, because if we look at this table right here, we have your business cards for Charming Crafts. You can see that they have um, your logo with, I believe that you have the broom in this one as well, and it has the purple hues to it, so very nice. I like that it blends right into the theme of your physical booth, so that's great. And then over here, we see a different set of business cards. Now, I think that these are your business cards for your photography. All right, so great job having the cards out at both tables. So you don't know for sure if a shopper is going to check out both sides of this one booth, okay? So it's good to have both sets of business cards on both sides, okay? So you wanna basically, it's like in-person cross-posting for, for you social media gurus out there. Okay, now for your banner, this is actually something that um, Meg and I, were, we were kind of talking about um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe, I don't know, something like that, a couple of weeks, maybe a month ago, and um, like different things that she could do at her booth to really push the theme as far as it can go. You know, and one of the things that we kind of talked about was like this broom thing. So obviously there's like a, a witchy type of uh, vibe at the booth. And we drew this up, you know, like literally like a physical sketch of what this could look like. And I think it turned out pretty cool, you know. So it just adds like a different element to the signage. Um, you know, you walk into craft fair booths and... Most people have the banner, right? So the, the banner is kind of a standard, but it's like, who's doing this? Like, who's putting an actual physical prop, like, with the banner to really push the theme, you know? So I think this was something that, you know, we kind of talked about and hoped that it would turn out cool. But, you know, seeing it in person now, I think it's really neat. So... This is just, again, something that you can do to elevate your marketing. It's like, okay, everybody's doing a banner, but how can I go above and beyond? So think about additional things that you can do to take that next step. But as far as the banner itself goes, I think it's really, really attractive. It's it's a good size, you know, for, let's just assume this is a 10 by 10 for this particular portion of the business, okay? So for a 10 by 10, I think this is really good size. It's either a six or an eight foot banner. It's kind of hard to tell, but it feels appropriate for the booth. Really nice color fade on it. You kind of have like almost like a black down in the corners here. And then you have like this indigo, you know, like violet type of purple bluish streaking through here. And that's reflected on a lot of your materials, both on uh, social media and your business cards. So great to have that. Your logo, and it has your location on it, which is always something nice to put on the banner as well. So there's Kentucky there and your business name handcrafted and made with magic. All right, so a nice little blurb underneath the business name. And then finally, the QR code, okay? So it has a lot of elements, but you've managed to put a lot of elements into it without it feeling like stuffed and busy. And that's not easy to do. It, it's really not. It's, it's very, very easy to like cram things in and for it to look crowded you know it's so easy to fall into that so great job of managing to put a lot into your marketing banner while still fe feeling like breathable now over on this side right here you can see a table runner all right and says Megan D photography. Okay. So right off the bat right there, we're getting marketing for that aspect of the business as well. And then what you can't see from this angle, you guys is on top of the table. She has an email signup sheet. Okay. And that is absolutely crucial at in-person events. You guys don't forget about email signup sheets. 
It's one of the more easier things that you can do. And it is going to pay off in the long run, okay? Because um, the more that you can build up an email contact list, those are guaranteed contacts, okay? So when you send an email out, boom, you're getting all of those people are getting that email. Side tip, you guys, just a little side note. When you send out your mass emails to your full contact list, use the blind carbon copy, all right? So if you're not familiar with that, when you go to send the email, put your own email address in the to area. So it looks like you're sending it to yourself, right? And then in the BCC area, that is where you want to put everybody else's emails. The reason why that you want to do this is that it hides everybody's emails from each other, their, their email addresses. Okay, so as a follower, when you receive this email, it's not like you're getting access to like hundreds of strangers' email addresses. Okay, you don't want that, you know. So you want people to feel secure about them giving you their email address, all right? So be sure to use that blind carbon copy for those mass emails. But yeah, during this segment of the review, I think this is an appropriate time to talk about the two businesses together. I like that you have the photo like booth basically set up. And of course, it's it's even more fun that you have like the masks and the different ways that people can dress up and be goofy and have a good time with it, you know. So that of course plays into this part of the booth over here, okay, because they can kind of just, you know, release their own magic, right? I mean, they can kind of just be whatever they want to be in that moment. So that part is really cool. And I think it kind of just intertwines the two sides of the booth really well. Now, one thing I would say, though, is that, okay, over here, basically, there's not much room needed for much of anything. Okay. So like, it's not like you're selling physical products or things like that over here. You know what I mean? So what I would do is take your Z pattern and bump it over, like move it to the left about two feet. So have this table, have, have all three tables come over about two feet to the left. And that is going to give a whole bunch of more room over in here. And then especially with this side table that we talked about, then you can make that and turn that into like a legitimate six foot long table and it would be plenty of breathing room. That is gonna buy you a ton of space for being able to spread some of this stuff out, okay? So it's not as jam-packed. I know I'm kind of bouncing around in this review. I'll blame the stage four man cold for that. But <laughs> so we're kind of talking about general use of space, like mm, five categories early, but it's fine. Um, but I think that is just going to buy you a lot of breathing room on top of your tables. All right. So um, just something to consider. So with that being said, you know, with marketing, all the stuff that we talked about with marketing, I think you're doing a really good job. I think you're doing good with tying your theme into your marketing, which is kind of like an advanced stage of marketing. Um, that, that generally takes vendors sometimes years to, to get to that point where their theme is actually part of their marketing and their marketing is part of their theme. You know what I mean? So great, great job of getting to that level. Okay, now let's talk about vertical space at the booth. So I think vertical space at the booth could be better. This is where you're going to alleviate some issues that are kind of like your cramping issues on the tables by going a little bit more vertical, okay? So even just looking at it from this angle right here, we can see that, again, this table, it feels really, really healthy. It feels balanced. And over here, this is where we kind of start to lose it. It's just it's just too tight, too tight over here, okay? So what can we do to get all three tables to feel, at least when it comes to breathability and space, like this table does? So there's a couple of different things that you can do. You can go more vertical with your displays, or we can just, again, utilize a secondary table, or I should say like a fourth table, <laughs> right, um, over here to spread stuff out. 
I think the solution on this particular booth is it's going to be a little bit of both, you know, some spreading out is going to be good, but then finding ways to go a little bit more vertical would be good as well. I love the, I love this display right here. Is there a way that you can incorporate a second one somewhere because it's very tall and it has a ton of space on it. So it's like for this one display, you can get literally like, I mean, for sure, all the, all the products that are on these two displays and then maybe even something else. Right. So just be strategic with it. Um, continue to keep your theme in mind when you go vertical. I think you're doing a really good job of making conscious decisions on utilizing displays that reflect the theme well. You know, I mean, and of course the main objective is for the display to showcase the particular product well, but you're doing a great job of like keeping everything in mind. You know, does it does it reflect my theme well and, and stuff like that. So so yeah, uh, just looking around, you know. Um, now, one thing I'll say again is that, you know, you do have a very, very high, just sheer number of different items. And that's when it gets tricky. You're faced with a decision where it's like, do I really want to cut down the number of items I'm offering at the booth? Because maybe that's part of the fun. Maybe the variety itself is part of the fun. So... You know, don't corner yourself into a decision where you don't want to do that and you're doing it just for the sake of having less stuff out there, okay? Because that's not really a solution. That's kind of just a sacrifice, right? So maybe we look at some other things, like how do we create some other space at the booth? And one thing that I thought of is like the number of props that you have, okay? So some props are good. But let's look at the number of candles, for instance, okay? So on this one table here alone, there's one over here we can see. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Minimum of six candles at this one table. All right, so we're probably pushing it on this table, all right? So maybe even just cut it in half, go down to three, and that's already probably going to put a little bit more of that clarity and breathability into the booth and we come to this table right here we got one two and three all right so this looks a little bit better so we got one two and three as opposed to having the six over here this table take note you guys this table actually doesn't have one all right so maybe the candles you know maybe just a couple of them maybe just maybe just a couple of them and because like I said, this booth, or th this booth, this table in particular looked really, really clean, you know, and there's, there's no, there's not a lot of extra fluff on this one, not too much, you know, so maybe just scale back on all the bonus stuff and that could alleviate some of the issues. So as we're talking about, you know, utilizing vertical space, that might solve any kind of issues that you thought you had as far as, okay, now I have to incorporate more vertical space. All right, so let's talk about colors, contrast, and texture. Definitely a strength at the booth. The main color theme is purple and black. So those just right off the bat, they they look really attractive together. And purple and black just have a way of making people think of Halloween and magic and like witchy stuff. So like it just... It's, it's nice because it's kind of like a dual purpose color combination. It's It just looks attractive together and it brings on a certain feeling. It's like red and green. You can't look at red and green together and not think of Christmas, right? So certain colors, when they're paired together, they do work wonders at a booth. So use that to your advantage, you know, no matter what you sell. Um, keep those color combinations in mind and like how they can kind of spark emotions and connect people to certain feelings and certain times of year and holidays and things like that and use it to your advantage. Now the contrast when we look around the booth is pretty good as well. One of the things that we talked about with contrast all around the booth is your signage and it's fantastic. It's black on white. You can't get better than that. And when we look at the table runners and the tablecloths, I really, really 
like the selection of kind of like this very, very light purple. This is more closer to like a lavender maybe. And that is against the straight jet black tablecloths. And that looks fantastic. Looks really, really good. Even though it's a different shade of like purple than what's in your marketing, I think I'm okay with it. You know, typically I try to steer people away from doing that where it's like, you kind of have like two tones or three or four tones going on. But I think in this case it actually works because it just looks so good on the tables. Now, as far as the texture goes, we don't see a whole lot of texture. We do see some texture here on these accent pieces. Okay. So we haven't talked about these yet where they're just little bits of accent pieces of purple that run on the side of your backdrop and banner. And you can see that there is like some pattern to them. And it's not like you have items that are displayed right up against it or anything like that. And the pattern isn't this like extreme crazy pattern that's super disruptive to the eye. So this is the kind of pattern and texture that I'm talking about you guys that is nice and beneficial. Most of the time when I'm talking about textures, I'm complaining about it. <laughs> I'm talking about like checker patterns and flannel patterns and plaid patterns. And I'm like, stay away, stay away from that. Um, this is a case where it's good. You know, it's got like a little nice, like little ripple effect to it. It's got some like shimmer to it. And it just has just enough to give it like personality, right? Without it being just super overpowering. All right. So yeah, I think it's doing a really good job. So as far as your colors, your contrast, your texture, I think you're knocking it out of the park. And even when we take a look at both booths here over here, you've stuck to the same black tablecloth, which I think is a really good, it's a really good decision on your part because it helps to show that yes, this is one booth, one booth, two businesses. Okay. So there's some challenges in that. And even something as simple as like your tablecloth matching all the way around, something as simple as that can help at least to drop the hint that it's one operation. Okay, now let's talk about the strength of the theme. So I think the strength of the theme is absolutely fantastic. You've done some bonus work that helps with the theme. So let's talk about a few different elements that we have not mentioned in the review yet. So when we look at the top of the canopy, we see these string lights. And if we look a little bit closer, I think it was this video right here. Let's kind of skim through the video. Do, 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 do. Yep, there we go. Okay, so they're kind of like jack-o'-lanterns, right? So you got these jack-o'-lantern lights that are going all the way across on the inside. And that is super cool. I bet you that would look really cool. Um, like on a cloudy day or as we get later into the year, the days are getting a little bit shorter. So you might actually uh, so you might actually even have some stages of the craft fair where it's getting a little bit darker. But yeah, so that's something cool. And another thing that we haven't talked about is this sign right here. So it says, welcome, come in for a spell. And it's got the witch on the broom with the black kitty cat. Can't forget about that. And the full moon, right? So we're dropping a lot of hints there <laughs> about what we're about to get into with the rest of the booth. And then down here you have the big old jack lantern right there. I don't know if there's like something inside that. It looks like this lifts up. There's like a lid on it, but um, at any rate, even just looking at that alone by itself, that's again, helping to drop the hint of what the theme at the booth is going to be. So yeah, as far as the strength of theme goes, very, very well done. Um, we already talked about the signage, the shape of the signage, the coffin shape, the colors between the purple and the black how much of that does to help the theme and your banner, your big old banner. And of course we can't forget about the awesome brooms that turned out great too. So yeah, a lot of work has gone into, I mean a tremendous amount of work has gone into solidifying the theme in the booth. So there's no doubt about it. As far as the strength of the theme goes, it's absolutely top notch really no recommendations. If anything, honestly, Megan, I would say just pull slightly back on the props and things like that, because 
you don't want to go past that tipping point of, okay, now I'm kind of overshining um, my items and, and things like that, you know. So just be careful of that. I think you're kind of like you got one foot over the line and one foot not over the line. <laughs> so that's really all I'd say about the strength of theme is is it's it's – it's almost too good. You know what I mean? It's it's almost getting to that point. So really well done. It looks fantastic. The the choices that you made and all and everything, very, very nice. All right. Let's talk about accessibility. So accessibility, we're gonna cover a couple of different kind of subtopics within it. One is gonna be the safety in and around the booth. Another one is going to be how close people have to get in order to see things. So like literally accessing things. So uh, for the safety of the booth, I'd say overall pretty solid. There's a couple of things that we can look at. This guy right here, I'm not entirely sold on the placement of it. Okay, so there's probably people who would want to cut through here. Okay, so um, maybe uh, they're maybe they're kind of like standing here and they see something like over here, like oh, like. There was a couple people taking pictures, but they left and now they want to go through. So they kind of have to like back out and come out around. So that's one thing here to look at. The table runner over here was something I spotted as well, where it's kind of, it's too lengthy and it's rolled up a little bit on the ground there. So you just, this, I mean, I don't think it would like literally hurt anybody, but if somebody caught their shoe on it or something, you don't want all of your items to get pulled you know if if somebody pulls their shoe on this or something then every that means everything else on the table is going to go with it you know so that's kind of more like a convenience thing as opposed to it being like a potential physical event or whatever you want to call it so otherwise i think you're in pretty pretty solid shape um, looking around the booth as far as like safety stuff you have the electrical that's running and there's no electrical wires running down on the ground okay so that's good um, I didn't see anything over here either. So you had your ring light and I don't know if I saw a cord running. So I don't know if you got that like battery powered or how you got that going, but either way, it's, it's nice to see that at least, you know, pretty cleaned up from, from everything that I could see. Your tablecloths, by the way, are the stretch tablecloths. So sometimes we'll see people use the standard type of tablecloths, but when you have different sizes of tables, it can get kind of tricky, okay? So you gotta make sure that you're using the right size tablecloths if you don't have these stretch ones that are contoured to the particular size of the table. But because of the fact that you're using these types, there's no rolling issues or slack on the ground or anything like that, so very good. This table runner over here, is hanging a few inches above the ground. That looks fantastic. Um, your tent, I didn't see any tent weights. So that might be one thing to consider. Okay, so don't see them over here. So no tent weights over here. And we're just kind of getting cut off on the picture from seeing the other corners. So I don't know if we're going to have another picture. So, you know, we get blocked there. Um... Look in the background here. No, no. You can kind of move the video around a little bit. You just you can't tell in that corner, you know, because of the canopy. And then this one, ooh, I can't tell if there was one on this corner or not. But okay, so if you don't, that's definitely something that you want to do. Okay, it's. It's a safety thing for sure, but it's also definitely avoiding a huge, huge pain in the ass for yourself <laughs> if your tent goes flying. Um, it has, you know, it has happened. I've, I, I mean, this year alone, my God, I've seen so many videos of people's tents at craft fairs go go up, go up in the air, and. Um, it can cause a lot of issues, it can cause a lot of issues. I mean, damage to your own products, damage to neighboring products, which, you know, to your own stuff. Yeah, that definitely sucks. But when it, you know, starts like affecting like other vendors, then that's when it becomes like a huge, huge headache, you know, and, uh, and it can even get you in trouble with event organizers and stuff like that. So definitely not scolding you if you got them out there. 
Um, when you're on grass like this, there is an alternative too. You don't really necessarily need tent weights. You can also use stakes. So like uh, stakes that you would see like for camping tents when you're on grass. Um, that's also a nice, easy alternative if you're on grass. Um, instead of having like the big bulky, like, you know, sandbag looking things, right? So keep that in mind too as an alternative, but uh, something to think about for accessibility. Now, for the other part of accessibility that we talked about, how close do people have to get to see what's going on? I think your theme is helping out with that. You're doing a really good job of like broadcasting your theme outwards, basically, in such a way that as people are getting even remotely close to your booth, they're going to know what's going on. You know, they're going to know what's being presented at the booth. So very good job with that, like very good job utilizing the theme to make your booth accessible from a distance, okay? So a lot of times I talk about people's signage, how they can utilize their signage and the script and fonts that they use on their signs. But in this case, it's really your theme that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting to attract people in. So really cool. I think it's um, a nice kind of byproduct of how strong your theme is, is that it's going to draw people in from a greater distance who are into this sort of, um, you know, topic. Okay. And then one final note on accessibility is also the number of people that can get into the booth, the booth and, you know, physically access your booth. And we talked about taking these three tables that are part of the Z pattern and shifting them about two feet over. And then we talked about maybe instead of this being kind of like a, a square card table that we could go with a table of about this size. I think this is like a six footer, right? And put that on this side wall. So not only is that going to give you more table space than what you have now, but it's also going to shift this entire thing over a little bit and make this a bigger open area so that more people can come in. So I think that it's going to be really beneficial when Megan took these pictures for this booth review, she had an extremely busy day. I think it was actually her busiest show of the year. So I'm sure that there were times during this craft fair where it would have been nice to have even a couple extra feet in this space right here for people to come in. So just keep that in mind. You know, it's like if you do the 20 by if you do the 20 by 10 booth with your two businesses, it's like you really don't need the full 10 by 10 for the photography side, you know? So like, what can you do to definitely show off the photography side? But, you know, really, this is where you're going to be pulling your profits and all that stuff, you know, from the show. So, um, yeah, create a little bit more square footage for yourself. And I think that's going to definitely pay some dividends. All right, now let's talk about general use of space, which I feel like I've covered like seven different times in this review already. <laughs> so, sorry. Um, I guess I'll just like summarize what I talked about. You know, like buying some bonus space over here, that's going to be great. Um, you know, not utilizing the full 10 by 10 for the photography side. And I really think that is probably about it spreading out these two tables. These are the ones that you're going to want to work on. This one, this table, I seriously would not even like touch it. It's freaking perfect. Okay. It's really balanced, nice spacing, breathable, all that good stuff. Okay. So these two are the ones that you're going to want to focus on. And then possibly if you're going to do the six foot like table here, you know, these three tables. All right. So that is going to be about it. It's basically just going to be about taking some stuff from over here, putting it on this table, what works, what doesn't, just kind of reconfiguring things a little bit, shifting stuff around. It's not going to be anything major, okay? So definitely not suggesting anything major for your booth because I think you have a really nice design. I like the Z pattern, always have. It's, it's a nice flow and it's uh, good that there's vendor space carved out in the back and then plenty of room for shoppers. So I'm definitely a big fan of the Z pattern. When you can have a bonus side table, it's like a hundred times better. Okay. So you basically have the potential to have like the perfect craft fair layout. So just think about what you can do to get there. And you know, like I said, nothing major and you're well on your way. All right, now let's talk about the eye test. So the eye test, 
It's basically the one or two seconds that a shopper's walking by and what are you doing at your booth to get them to stop and check your stuff out. So the eye test is good. If it was just this booth, if it was just the Charming Crafts booth, I would call it great. Okay, but because you're trying to juggle the two different businesses and no fault to you, I don't blame you at all. Um, I have like 25 side projects of my own. So, <laughs> um, by the way, check out Heavens to Betsy and Lee Toast. Okay, so when you're trying to juggle the two different businesses, it's it's always good to let them have their own personalities. Okay, so for example, let's take a look at the marketing. Okay, so this banner here, you have the M, the D, and then the kind of handwritten Megan D photography as the logo. Over here, we have an entirely different look, okay? So each business 100% has their own personality, okay? And the businesses are completely different, right? So this is like crafts and everything, you know, uh, little creations and artisan works and things like that. Fantastic. Over here, it's just a, an entirely different business, right? Photography, and it's, you know, nothing like this. So how do you showcase each one and let it, each one have its own personality, but yet make it so that it is one experience? So I like that you've gone with the white tent on each one. I like that you have not gone with, say, like a purple tent over here and then a white tent over here. I think that would run you into some issues where people would be like, these are legitimately two different booths from two different vendors. Like, you know what I mean? So that is something that's good. The two white tents, okay? The black tablecloths, that's something that we talked about before. And even using the same type of tablecloth, like the stretch on all of them, okay? So that is good. I like that you have a similar runner. So look at the runner over here. It's kind of, again, like that lavender color and then over here is it the same one is it the same lavender um, it looks pretty close if it's not okay so that is good too now one thing I'm, I'm just trying to kind of get creative here I wonder if I wonder if this booth over here could be rearranged a little bit and not have your backdrop come all the way up against your charming crafts booth okay and I wonder if you could do the backdrop, first of all, not quite as large. And I know that might be tough to like kind of get like a whole shot, like especially if you have like a group of people, okay? So I can totally understand if you need the full like 10 feet of width. But I wonder if it would be better served on the sidewall and then have a smaller table with the props kind of over here, all right? Now what I'm getting at is that you basically have a white wall on this backdrop and then a white backdrop over here, okay? And you'd have like the decorative one for the picture on the side. What you can do then is bring the banner. I would bring both banners. I would literally even consider overlapping them slightly into each tent. So have one banner like one foot on this side of the, the, of the split of the tent, kind of like that. And then could you have like another banner that's like down here or something and it would kind of like come over here. I, I'm just trying to think of things that you can do where there is a little bit of overlap. Okay. So it would like show that, you know, Hey, this is, this is like one thing, you know, maybe you could have some kind of sign out front on the two here or on this post and it's not specific to one business or the other you know some sort of neutral sign what if you actually had a sign it was like somewhat bigger maybe maybe like this okay so maybe like double the size of this sign and it said hi i'm megan and then have charming crafts to the right like an arrow and then megan d photography to the left like an arrow so just get creative with it. You know, I'm just kind of spitballing and like tossing some ideas out there and think of things that you can do to kind of join them together, but yet, you know, keep them separate. So it's, it's super hard. It's not easy at all, but 
I think you've got a good start. I think you've already made some good decisions, like I said, with the two white tents and um, there's, you know, the business cards on both tables. So keep doing that. Like over here, have something that maybe have like your business cards from Charming Crafts. Make sure that those are over here too, okay? So just have that stuff blended as well on both sides. All right, so I'm going to do like kind of a rapid fire tips here for possible improvement first of all consider going vertical with your display so we talked about displays very early on consider going vertical and another thing that you can do is reduce the amount of props and decor so we talked about the candles right there's a lot of candles kind of like in this one particular section from like here to here i think there was about close to 10 on these two tables um if you're doing a 20 by 10 foot booth Use a little bit more space for charming crafts and a little bit less space for photography. Okay, so whether you just shift the entire thing over or you do a reconfiguration of this and buy yourself a little bit more space on this side, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. Another thing is take a look at the runners. We haven't talked about this yet, but I wanted to mention it during the review. A lot of wrinkles in the runners, okay? So I would recommend that you roll your runners. And if you fold them, sometimes you can get away with like ironing them, you know, you can iron these wrinkles out. Um, but some of these runners, they really can't be ironed. You got to be careful with like what type of fabric they are and stuff. So you don't burn your house down. Don't want to do that. Besides that, if you roll your runners, you can get some of those mailing tubes, you know, like those cardboard, like mailer tubes that you get like posters sent to you for or whatever use that to put your uh, runners in and that's like a nice way to protect them and keep them rolled up in there but yeah that is really about it just a couple of little ex uh, accessibility things that we talked about too the placement of this guy um, are your tents secured by any kind of weights or stakes the runner you know it's kind of uh, rolled up there on the ground a little bit so all in all, you're doing a really good job. Nothing that we've talked about has been super earth shattering, you know, so that's great. And these are all just little tips that you can kind of sprinkle in to take it to that next level. So Megan, thank you so much for sending great pictures in and a couple of nice videos too that we were able to use. And um, also want to thank you for being a channel member so membership comes with a lot of perks including a booth review but there is a lot of stuff besides that including loyalty badges custom emojis member shout outs connecting on my website where i feature your business on my website um, printable resource guides that you can print out and use at your next craft fair uh, the ability to submit questions for channel member q a videos there's a lot of perks you guys so please consider being a channel member it is very reasonable less than five dollars a month you can cancel anytime so click the button below that says join to learn more this was episode number 25 in the craft fair booth review series if you want to check out all the other booth reviews click on this playlist above and thank you all so much for watching and tolerating my sick voice. Have yourself a great day.